Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel with Wendy. In this video, I'm going to be going through something that is going to help make it a lot easier for you to kickstart a sewing project, and that is to make some patterns out of your capsule wardrobe. And if you pick the right pieces to make these patterns out of, these patterns basically become your building blocks of guaranteed fit whenever you're starting a brand new sewing project. If you've been around here for a long time, you know that my sewing tutorials typically don't involve patterns, but just tracing items that you already own. But there's lots of times where you don't have something that is the exact same fit as the thing that you're aiming for. And so I wanna walk through how to do the building block that can get you to whatever fit you're interested in. I do have a previous video where I show you how to clone your clothes, as in how to fold and lay flat your clothing and trace around it to make a pattern that can make more of that same item. So I'm not gonna go too much into that exact technique, but instead I'm going to talk through which items in your closet are going to be the ones most effective for building this capsule pattern collection. At the end, I'll show a few examples of how I've used these kinds of techniques to make lots of my sewing tutorials that are on this channel. So I'll see you at the end. A dress shirt is a good template because when it's fitted, it gives you the minimum size. So you can make a lot of tops from that just by changing the sleeve length or by making things wider for some flare. Pretty much as long as you don't disturb the neck hole and the shoulder area too much, it will all fit nicely at those key points. And the other important thing to look for in a dress shirt is that it's not stretch material since that will be misleading to copy a stretch material onto a non-stretch material. One trick I use to not let my pattern sheets get lost is that I always have the front and the back attached to each other along the center. So I folded my paper in half, folded my dress shirt in half and used some clips to hold it in place. And then I traced the front first. Again, I will link the video where I go through this process in a little bit more detail, but the goal is to get the material as flat as possible without straining the fabric so that you can accurately mark all its edges and seams on the paper. Sleeves are a bit tricky, but think of it as trying to draw a shape that would be like as if you cut the sleeve open to lay it flat. So I'll do one side of the sleeve, flip it over to the other side of the sleeve, and then once I'm happy with the markings, I connect them all with a black marker so it's nice and clear. Now for tops that aren't as fitted at the shoulders, I like to model those off of loose sweaters. We're gonna cram two sweaters into one pattern set. So for this first one, I'm gonna do the raglan style. Raglan sweaters, they have sleeves that are connected from the collar to the armpit, so there's no pronounced shoulder, which means, hint hint, that this would be a nice beginner project because it's not as picky on fit. The good thing about this knit that I used is that it doesn't have a lot of stretch, so that makes it ideal for pattern drafting because I'm transferring it onto a non-stretch material, and the loose fit means that this is good for blouses, but it also crosses over over into hoodies and jackets and other layers, you know? The second sweater style is drop shoulder. This is a sweater from university days. I was part of a Christian group on campus and I have this sweater for the memories, but also because it's been a loyal, comfy, fit, the sweater has not let me down. So the drop shoulder means that the shoulder seam, it hits below the shoulder, which is a placement that looks great on jackets and cardigans, hence bringing this into the capsule wardrobe selection. So now I'm just tasked with trying to capture the different shoulder seams. I repeated my tactic of folding the paper in half, and with the raglan, my trick is to keep peeling the fabric back so that I can see the seam and transfer that onto the paper. And once I was happy with that, I brought over the drop shoulder sweater and added that to the pattern, trying to keep the collar and the armpit location as consistent as possible. That way I get to reuse the lower body part of this whole pattern. When it comes to the sleeves, the sleeve is a little bit tricky with the raglan. It has kind of a weird slope along the top since the back of the sweater is higher than the front. So keep that in mind when you're trying to trace both halves. Again, thinking of it like trying to replicate the sleeve if it was cut open and lay flat. 
Now for pants. I wanted one pattern set to encompass three styles that I gravitate towards. So we'll start with the easiest since it's big and forgiving, culottes. This pair that I love is high-waisted. It has an invisible side zip and an elastic band on the back of the waist. So the trick will be to copy that over to a pattern. Next up, I'm gonna to add to it these plaid pants that are a bit more fitted and they end above the ankle. There is a fly closure in the front, but I'm going to ignore that because I can only manage invisible zippers for now. And the back, I noticed that it uses two small darts above the back pockets to taper the waist above the butt. So I'm gonna show you how I transfer those darts onto a pattern. And finally, let's add a nice long pant to the pattern. This pair touches the floor and it has some flare action at the bottom. It also has a front fly, but again, I'm not going to trace it because fly zippers really intimidate me. I do really like the height of the flare on these pants. Tracing it will give me a lot of options to make fun statement pants in the future. So this is a good choice. The front of your left and right legs is symmetrical, so we just need one to cover them both. I folded my culottes in half and I marked it all the way around. Now, with the dress pants, I did try to preserve the location of the crotch seam to be consistent across all the patterns, but it is a different fit from the culottes, so the waistband did end up in a different spot. I do love high-waisted pants, so all of my pants are high-waisted. Then to give me a seam allowance, I brought in another marker, some tape, and some kind of stick. And together this created this double-headed tool that lets you add a seam allowance all the way around. Now for the back, this is much harder to do because most pants will use some kind of tactic to take in the fabric at the waist above the butt. That's just because typically the waist is smaller than the butt. The back also has a deeper curve along the crotch seam, which can also be tricky. So the technique I made up involved using a scrap fabric on top that I slowly trimmed and modified to get the shape of the inner leg curve. Then I took the pant out of the way to trace that onto the pattern directly. Now, the easiest way to get an understanding of the darts is to copy from a plaid print item. So if you measure the distance between the lines on the plaid before and after the dart, the difference between them is how much fabric was absorbed into the dart. So I take that distance and I add it to the hips of the pattern and then I smooth it out until it connects to the side of the leg again. And now you have enough fabric for your butt and you know where the dart is to take in all the excess fabric so it fits your waist. Amazing! Here we are, pants and skirts. I got this skirt in the last year and there's a few reasons why I love it as a pattern guide. It has an invisible back zip with darts, so that's gonna give me a really snug pattern. The cut of it also gives me my ultra mini skirt measurements. So that leaves a lot of room for different styles because from, from the tiniest style, you can go as long and as wide as you like the skirt to be. And of course, it's plaid. So the mystery of the darts can be solved it's got a built-in ruler to basically help me figure out the darts. So like the dress shirt and the sweater, I folded my paper in half to get all of this pattern on one page. This is definitely one of the simpler tracing jobs with the main trick being, again, to use plaid if you have it to measure how much fabric there was before the dart was added. Repeating what I did with the pants, I measured the distance between the lines before and after the dart and then add that difference at the hip so that the extra fabric is restored to the pattern. These are the two pieces that I cut out following the dress shirt. Uh, some of the key things to pay attention to is that the back will always be higher than the front simply because your neck occupies a bit more space in the front than in the back. And so you don't wanna match that height in the front or else you're gonna feel a little stifled. Armholes can also be quite different between the back and the front, so that's why it's also important to trace them out separately. You can see here that the front armhole doesn't go as far down, but the back armhole does go much further. True to the length of the dress shirt, I also maintained the back being longer and the front being shorter so that that was repeated if I wanted to follow it exactly. To really give the body full movement, these two should be separate pieces so that this bottom piece here can be wider and brought in through some kind of dart or pleating and that helps your back to move more freely. But 
Depending on the fabric, you might not always have to use a yoke, but I included where it was just in case I needed it someday. And then here is the sleeve piece. I marked out which side was the front and which side was the back and then followed the curve of the sleeve. I won't always use the cuff, but I do like to mark out how wide it is because proportions are pretty important in terms of how a finished piece looks. Now the way you use this pattern is with the sleeve, you fold the fabric in half and then place the sleeve on top with the goal of getting two symmetrical pieces, not twins, but symmetrical, uh, so that one is good for the left and one is good for the right. Um, and then with this piece, it's all about folding in half. So when you're tracing the front, you'll want this fold to align with a fold on the fabric. That way you get one symmetrical piece. And normally what I do is I just lift this and fold all these parts out of the way so that I'm only looking at the front. And then likewise, when we're doing the back, Flip it, place this fold along the fold on the fabric so you get a symmetrical piece. And if anything is showing through, you just fold it out of the way. The sweater! So this shape belongs with this shape. And this shape belongs with this shape up here. Similar to the dress shirt, I captured where the cuff is if I wanted to replicate those proportions. And then also here again, this is the front, this is the back. Front goes lower, back doesn't go as low. All of the pants that I did were high-waisted because that's just the way I like it. This is where the flare begins on the flare pant. So I marked that in case I ever wanted to use that as a guide for where to go even more flared or like do big ruffles or anything like that. The skirt, definitely the simplest out of all of the items that I traced to make a pattern. They're a tube and very forgiving. And if you make it out of stretchy fabric, you don't even have to worry about this stuff really. To give you an example of how helpful it is to make patterns from capsule items, I have a pattern that I copied from a winter jacket, which is another great capsule item if you live somewhere cold. And if you watched my recent video of me turning a sleeping bag into a puffy parka, you would have seen me use that pattern set as well as when I made a clear raincoat. Now I have a nice and flat set of papers that can guide me whenever I want to make a jacket and as long as I follow them I know I will be able to fit inside because it was traced from something that I can fit inside. If you do end up using anything you learned here to make something please do use the hashtag madewithwendy so I can find it on Instagram. Later this month I will be uploading a video where I use the skirt template to help me make a skirt. If you want to keep an eye out for that I think I will be premiering it which means if you hit the bell notification, you're gonna get notified when it's going live. We can all watch it together and chat with each other. I did this last month and it was really fun, so I wanna do it again. That's all for this video. I hope you found it really helpful. Uh, I know that cloning clothes tutorial is really popular and so I just wanted to make something that could kind of like build on that. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're subscribed, then I'll see you next time. Bye.